Today I'm at the Francis Tavern Museum to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the renovation of their historic long room. We're celebrating the best way I know how, with a colonial cocktail recreation that was served at the renovation unveiling 50 years ago. Okay, so we're here in a different part of the Francis Tavern Museum to make some fish house punch, which has been made here in many celebrations. I'm here again with Mary, the Education and Public Programs Coordinator of the museum in their new gallery in the Davis Educational Center, which yes. is very cool. Um, it's a, it just opened to the public. Yes. Uh, tell me a little bit about this place that we're in. It is to the beat of their own drums. It's about regimental flags during the Revolutionary War. We'll show you a couple flags that you have to come see all of it in its glory because there's some really cool ones in here. I'm going to toot my own horn because my name's on the wall, but it's pretty good. Yeah, it's great. But so let's get started making this cocktail that is a cocktail that was made definitely at the re Restoration Celebration in 1971. Yes. So we're starting with just a cup of lemon juice. Um, the original recipe says the juice of 24 lemons. We're making a quarter bath, but we're still only going to use four lemons for this because what I realized is this is my friend's lemon off a tree in Brooklyn. So tiny. Brooklyn, yeah, little cute grown in New York lemon. And this is today's grocery store lemon. So we're looking at like... <laughs> about double. Yeah, twice the juice. And I'm, I'm thinking, Franz, it, you know, he didn't have the juicing technology that we have today. We're looking at about four lemons, about a cup. Um, and then we're going to add just about a cup of water as well. And then this next, I, when I first saw it, I was like, wow, this is a lot of sugar for a cocktail. It was a very important commodity in the 18th century because everything included sugar. So when you think of things like the tea act and the sugar act, they needed sugar to put things in. It had a bunch of different purposes. Even the Continental soldiers, our regiments around us, uh, part of their daily rations included like rum. Yeah. To keep them healthy. Yeah, you gotta have the rum. And I think that rum back then was probably not distilled quite as well as the rum we get. No. So you need that whole cup of sugar back then. Just to like even it out. To go for it. Yeah. Um, in this case, we're using just a little bit less. I only have three quarters of a cup of sugar in there. Um, because we're, we're using our modern rums. The next addition is just gonna be a cup of a, a light rum. And I don't think, so light rums today are light because they're never put in a barrel. So mm -hmm. you don't have all that color. But I don't think back, back in the day they would have been able to get rum here without a barrel. No, everything was Costco size. So if you're <laughs> thinking like jumbo family pack, everything was large, you bought in bulk. The nice thing is he's getting these big barrels but he can roll them right, right off the dock that you yeah, told us just about. roll them into the basement. Well, go. the fish house punch is one of the oldest like punch recipes in the colonies too, which is wow. pretty cool. Yeah, so they they date back to the early 1700s. So this, we truly are drinking like the the colonists. We're also adding a cup of dark rum, and this is not going to be a super aged rum. So this is just a lightly aged dark rum. Just a cup of it, and you can really start to smell yeah that coming in. And it I know they smells delicious. They did make rum in the colonies. Yes. But I don't think that's what he was getting here at the tavern. Is that correct? No. Samuel would not have, like, made his own rum. It would mm -hmm. have been easier for him to be like, I brought in John Smith's stuff. Or, like, so and so down the block has a couple of barrels. I'll buy that. Gotcha. And then yes. he had... It's not like today where they're like, oh, this is our house-made rum. He no. Like, our next addition is just going to be a cup of brandy. Um, this is brandy made from grapes. I'm using an American-made brandy um, to make it, again, as close as we can. A lot of the brandy we get today comes from France, but I'm thinking he could probably could have found a brandy maker in, yeah. in the colonies. Yeah. 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 Uh, orchards like apples and peaches were very common, especially when you go uptown. And when I say uptown in the 1770s, I mean like City Hall Park. So wow. that would have been covered in orchards like apple orchards and peach orchards. And it was fairly easy to get fresh fruit here like you got a lemon from brooklyn yeah there you go we can grow things here <laughs> yeah and i mean we still i mean new york is still like one of the biggest producers of cider and we still have a ton of apples that grow in the states yeah speaking of the original recipe from that restoration party had peach brandy however i went to all of new york's liquor stores called around went on the internet could not find peach brandy uh -oh. apple brandy is very easy to get and it's pretty cool because Laird's has actually been commercially producing since 1780. So, you know, not as far back, but getting it's there. Pretty legit. Yeah. I, I'll accept it. <laughs> um, and so we're only going to add a half cup of this just because it's going to add a lot of sweetness. So we're just adding a little bit, a little touch of the apple. You can really smell it as I'm yeah. pouring this. I like Laird's. <laughs> They're approved. 
Yeah, I mean, this whole, this one is what, like, the long room would have probably smelled like, you know? Hopefully. Have your cocktail making stick here. Yes, our loggerhead, because everything was warmed up. So you would put this in the fireplace or kind of like a giant fire pit of some sort, <laughs> and you would warm it up, and you knew it was warmed up when it would turn, like, yellow and red. You would put it in here just to kind of warm everything up to kill off the bacteria. So it's kind of like a microwave. Your, yeah, a, a colonial, colonial microwave. microwave. <laughs> a colonial Horrifying. microwave for your cocktails. And I mean, even though everything wasn't served hot, like this punch wouldn't have been served that hot. Let's go to the other room and talk about why it also might not have been that cold. So the reason we're not going to add ice to this cocktail is because if we're trying to be accurate, as accurate as this room, there probably is no ice to be throwing in the punch bowl. No, no ice. Uh, fresh water was very hard to come by because everything was so polluted. So they either would have had to boil the water and let it cool, which would have been time consuming and not exactly time efficient for a tavern keeper trying to get everybody drunk to spend more money here. Keep ice on hand, especially during the summertime, would have been very, very difficult. And it likely would have only been used to keep like meats and stuff from going bad and preserving them. Right, so it makes sense what he has to keep because he's yeah. guys. He's not throwing it in the punch yeah. bowl for everyone. It also just dilutes a really good punch. That's exactly You want right. them drunk, guys. You <laughs> want them drunk. Yeah, they're spending more. They're dancing on the tables more if they're drunk. And we just learned these peaches probably wouldn't have been frozen in the colonial <laughs> times. Yeah, I guess we could think they definitely wouldn't have been frozen. Um, but it's also not fresh peach season in New York right now. Um, so we got some frozen peaches. And it kind of used can act as ice without diluting your cocktail, which is great. Um, so I'm just gonna give this a little stir, let those defrost a bit. Um, but this it is essentially- It smells so good right here. Yeah, I, I mean, I love to like think about, you know, 50 years ago when they were celebrating and looking at the restoration that it would have smelled just like this. I mean, I think yeah. we really recreated it and um, we we're not gonna put ice in it now, especially because there's two of us and that's <laughs> a lot of punch <laughs> to drink. But also you can just pour it over ice when you're serving it and have a great cocktail that will last way longer. Yeah. If you can't come to New York to check out the long room, celebrate the 50th anniversary by whipping up a batch of Fish House Punch at home. And don't forget to tag me and the museum in what you make. <laughs>